Hey there, this is going to be a short video where I showcase how you can turn this cylinder into a flange, which in my mind is a cylinder with a hole in it, as well as holes along the interior, along the surface that is left, which can, are places for bolts or things like that. So first you have to make your cylinder, get it to the right size. In this case, I set it to have 16 subdivisions because I wanted to have eight holes. So from here, select the top and bottom face, Go Control e to extrude. I'm going to do an offset of 4, and I want to create two divisions. From here, press Q. Just reselect the top and bottom face, just in case. And then, while holding Shift and right-click, I'm going to bridge the faces. This leaves us with an empty void, which is just what, our, what, we're, what we're looking for. I'm going to delete everything except the, I guess, 10? 10? 10? 12 polygons on this side, um, which is essentially one eighth of that cylinder. The reason I'm doing this is because it's easier to work on one thing than it is to work on eight. So we'll go to the duplicate special screen, click on your flange in the outliner, and then I'm going to go edit reset the settings just in case things were weird. Uh, switch over to instance, have it rotate 45 degrees in the Y axis and have it create eight copies. It will create one additional copy with which overlays directly over top of the original one. So I'm going to rename the original one uh, Geo Master or Master Geo, yeah, like that. And I'm going to hide it. The reason for this is because it causes uh, abnormality when I try to merge it all together later. So from here, I'm just going to work on instanced versions of that master. Switch to vertex selection, select this initial hole, and or middle vertex, and then we will go, oh, we will go and chamfer the vertex. Creates an odd shape, select those four, go circularize vertex. Sweet, that gives us something that's almost a hole. Switch divisions to one, and hurrah, it is essentially a hole. From here, um, we want to actually bridge that to, you know, we'll make a real hole out of it. So I'm gonna select the dot and bottom face, while holding shift and right click, we're going to bridge those faces as well. Now what's left, well, this gives us the base mesh. So if I press three, you can see that it looks uh, wrong, but in when I, when I press one and you see just the mesh, it looks right. So to fix this, we need to add some holding edges. I'm gonna go, sh oh, shoot. I'm going to, this is not doing what I remember doing. Okay, I'm gonna go to the modeling toolkit. I'm gonna click multi-cut. And while holding Control and Shift, I'm going to add some harder, oh, actually, sorry, doing this a different way. Going to select these edges, and then we'll bevel them. This gives you pretty good control over how things are going to look. In the attribute editor, I'm going to change the fraction to 0 0.1, and I'm going to give it two segments. This gives us something that is reasonably hard in edge quality. Uh, if you were smart, you may have also decided to select these at the same time and also bevel them. But I mean, perhaps this is a situation where you wanted to have a slightly different bevel here than you would elsewhere. So we'll, maybe we will do that. Back in the attributes editor, I'm going to set this to two segments and I'm going to set its fraction to 0 0.2 instead of 0 0.1. So that'll give us something that when I press three, it has a slightly less hard hole essentially than these outer, than these outer lines. From here, we need to convert these six-sided shapes into four-sided shapes, which is quite easy because of how few subdivisions we have. So switch over to the multi-cut tool and start that process. You may have also decided to do this before you added bevels to things, but it's up to you or not. Press enter to commit to your cuts and this will be a interesting process. I'm just gonna pause this while I While that was a somewhat frustrating process to, to do with a bevel, it is important to do so so that you can get a clean transition from uh, that point to this point instead of what would essentially be this point to that point. If that doesn't make sense, give it a try without a bevel and then bevel it afterward and you'll see what I mean. So from here, 
If I go to smooth it, you can see that it's pretty much, you know, it's pretty much good. It's what we want, except now we want uh, to go a little bit further. We want to make it one object. So to do that, you select all of your geometry and you go click the combine button. Now it's one piece of geometry, but it's still not smooth. So from here, you just have one more step to go. And you go edit mesh, hit merge, and turn down the tolerance because it just merged way too much together. So we'll switch this to 0 0.25 and that should leave us with something that works quite well. Let's give it a try. All right, so now we're left with a smooth flange-like shape that you can use for any of these sorts of tasks that you may need. All right, cool. Good luck.